With their bare feet, dozens of people were tiptoeing on the stone floor. They moved their legs between the well-fed rats with fear, but they were afraid not of the rodents themselves. Instead, they were afraid of the risk of harming them. Most women, and some men as well, carefully concealed their disgust. The floor was extremely dirty. There was a heavy smell and hundreds of rats were running around. But the expression of discontent and disgust would mean disrespect for the goddess Durga and the servants of the Karni Mata temple. Foreign tourists and Indian pilgrims arrived in Deshnok by 4 a.m. Today, they became the first visitors to the world famous Temple of Rats. A divine service began in the shrine and its sacred inhabitants threw hundreds from their holes. The ministers and pilgrims prepared delicious offerings for them. As a gift from these deities, those present received a special blessing. A white animal appeared among the gray rats. There were only a few of these out of more than 20,000 livestock. It is believed that the white rats in the temple are a manifestation of Karni Mata and her sons. For most of the planet's inhabitants who associate rodents with disease and misfortune, the Indian temple is surprising. But in fact, rats might deserve such attention. They are able to formulate rules and stick to them, laugh, and even think logically. This is given that the ability to isolate cause and effect relationships is considered the main difference between the human mind and the brain activity of other animals. And these rodents also have a clear hierarchy and self-organization in the flock. They even show signs of collective intelligence. So, maybe it turns out that the rat is not actually that far from a person. In fact, even closer than you could imagine. Firstly, people and rats are descended from the same origins. And secondly, rodents have the gift of providence. After all, how else do we explain the fact that rats are the first to flee from a sinking ship? More precisely, from a ship that will sink to the bottom of the ocean in the near future. It is likely that the ministers of the Karni Mata temple are not mistaken in their belief in the divine origin of rats. But scientists have a different opinion on this matter. However, it seems no less fantastic. It turns out that humans and rodents have a single ancestor, and this is not at all about Brahma. Researchers have discovered and reconstructed an ancient animal that became the progenitor and the placenta of all placental mammals. It was this creature that for the first time on Earth developed the ability to bear offspring in the placenta, which was inherited by other mammals, including humans. In addition, the ancient ancestor of rats appeared on the planet about 48 million years ago, and the first representatives of Homo sapiens settled on Earth only 350,000 years ago. Maybe over millions of years, rodents have really developed the ability to predict the future, which seems supernatural to us. The theory that rodents foresee events appeared along with the catchphrase, rats are the first to flee from a sinking ship. This expression was known as early as the middle of the 17th century. At that time, shipbuilding was at its peak. However, the ships were wooden sailboats, not the comfortable cruise ships of our time. In addition to stocks of food and gunpowder, each ship carried rats in the hole. Not on purpose, of course, because the rodents themselves decided where to settle. And often in the port, people saw hundreds of rats leaving the ship and later learned that that ship had gone to the bottom. Such stories didn't only happen in the 17th century. The Second World War also saw examples of this. The port of Murmansk is constantly under fire, and the USSR fleet is forced to continuously confront the enemy. In the meantime, the sailors are beginning to receive requests for a transfer, but, contrary to logic and common sense, not to quieter places. They want to serve here, in Murmansk, but on poorly armed and slow ships. The military leadership begins to investigate the insanity of the sailors. Soon, the reason for the strange behavior is revealed. The soldiers and sailors were trying to get out of those ships from which the rats escaped at any cost. The soldiers shared stories that the ships abandoned by rodents the day before did not return. The sailors made the obvious conclusion. The rats predicted the bombing and attacks of enemy submarines. Also, similar behavior of the animals was allegedly noticed on the eve of the historic Battle of Stalingrad. Rodents left the city en masse before the start of the battle. 
There may be another explanation for this phenomenon besides supernatural abilities. Researchers suggest that the ancient ancestors of rats could talk. Of course, they did not create an alphabet and did not write essays, but they could well have passed on the ability to communicate to their descendants, since modern rodents are also known to communicate. Rats use a rich system of sounds, with the help of which they exchange information with each other, and sometimes even communicate something, such as danger, to representatives of other species. In addition, the rodents laugh from tickling. Unfortunately, we cannot hear this laughter. Often rats conduct their conversations using ultrasound. Their laughter, for example, sounds at a frequency of 50 kilohertz, which is simply inaccessible to the human ear. This is precisely the secret of the providence of animals. They are also able to perceive low frequency vibrations, which are felt on board the ship when a storm begins in the distance, or during seismic activity at the bottom of the sea. Tsunamis and hurricanes also drive an infrastronic wave in front of them. Remember the scenes from the films when heroes put their ears to the ground and could supposedly hear horses running in the distance? It seems that rats can sense such vibrations. For example, the approach of an enemy squadron or the heavy weapons of the German army, which in 42 was advancing on Stalingrad. However, this theory has many flaws. For example, why did the rats leave only a few ships that went out to sea on the eve of the storm? Most of the ships sank to the bottom along with all the rodents on board. It is doubtful that rats have the ability to pick up sound waves of a certain frequency. But the gift of divination may indeed be rare among rats. So there is one more point in the treasury of the theory of their divine origin. The phenomenon of rats fleeing from a ship is also explained by historians and, oddly enough, literary scholars. The former argue that this is just the superstition of sailors, although not entirely unfounded. Firstly, the rodents on the ships hid deep in the hold, at the lowest levels. These animals are afraid of people and prefer to settle where they are least seen. If a hole appeared in the ship, then it was the habitats of the rats that were filled with water first. Faced with a choice to drown or enter the territory of human enemies, the animals always chose the latter. In such cases, they fled en masse. The crew of the ship always discovered the gap much later than the rats, so the sailors first saw the rodents fleeing from the ship and then learned about the problem. The logical chain, the rats run away, the ship sinks, is made. But these are also isolated cases. Most often, the ship was damaged far out to sea, although they ran out of their holds, hardly made it to the nearest port in an orderly manner. Rats swim well, but not for such long distances. The emergence of the belief about rats fleeing from the ship could have been formed completely by accident. Rodents, even in the modern high-tech world, cause great harm to ships. Imagine fighting them 100 years ago or 200. The sailing crews fought the pests as best they could, but it was a waste of time. One female rat brings up to 20 cubs at a time, and after 18 hours, she is ready for a new pregnancy, which lasts only 22 to 34 days. Within six months, or even after three to four months, young females can begin to bear offspring. At such a rate of reproduction, rats literally filled the holes of ships. When their number became unbearable, the team smoked out the parasites by all possible methods. Then, hundreds of them ran ashore, which was obviously noticeable. Another hypothesis says that this is how the rodents simply settled. When the colony became too large, part of it left their native hold in search of a freer place. What does the sinking ship have to do with it? Only despite the fact that in those days, they often went to the bottom. Crowds of rats clearly did not evoke positive emotions in people, as did the sinking ship. So gradually, these separate negative facts merged into one prejudice. In addition, people found confirmation of this idea when, by a simple coincidence, these two unrelated events occurred sequentially. Digging deeper into history, you can find another possible explanation. But this time, the literature should be studied. It turns out that initially, the rats did not flee from ships, but from dilapidated houses both literally and figuratively. Back in the 16th century, it was believed that shortly before the old rotten house collapsed, rodents escaped from it. This is quite logical. 
Firstly, they could be one of the reasons for the destruction of wooden buildings. Secondly, as in the case of the ship, animals used to notice serious damage to the base. And thirdly, in a dilapidated house which was not followed, even the owners were clearly in poverty, not to mention the unwanted pets. So rodents began to be associated with flight, and people quickly picked up this image. Rats began to represent desertion or betrayal. An idiom about rats fleeing from a dilapidated house arose in journalism and fiction. Then the phrase was slightly transformed. The Lord Mayor of London, Thomas Adams, condemning bribe takers and sinners, compared them with frightened rats leaving a burning house. And only at the end of the 17th century, this phrase acquired its modern form, overpowering rodents on ships. And at the beginning of the 19th century, something happened that allowed the idiom to remain in active use for almost 400 years. It was turned into a metaphor and even used to describe political scandals. On the pages of the newspaper Federal Republican, published on January 3rd, 1814 in Georgetown, there was a loud phrase, rats leaving a sinking ship. This is how the authors described Thomas Jefferson, who supported Napoleon Bonaparte deserting to the side of his opponent, Emperor Alexander I. Over the next 200 years, the idiom only strengthened in the literary environment. It is still used today as a synonym for the avoidance of difficulties, flight, or betrayal. Hypotheses that explain the phenomenon of rats fleeing from a sinking ship can be divided into biological, historical, literary, and divine. The first three are quite clear, seem logical, and in fact do not contradict each other. They can all be correct to some extent, but the ability of rats to foresee the future is still difficult to verify and confirm. But still, a lot of inexplicable things happen in the world. For example, in April 2021, in Brazil, the lottery winner did not come for a prize of $28.5 million. Perhaps one of the local rats had the winning ticket and foresaw the required combination of numbers, but it could not collect its money. And all because it spoke at frequencies that the lottery company simply could not hear. Write in the comments what you think about the ability of rats to anticipate a disaster. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.